Today I'm going to be working with a former HP executive to help him get his real estate investment portfolio going. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. If you're looking to parlay uh, previous lives, previous investments into the real estate investment space, like my man Larry is doing today, this is where you want to be. Subscribe, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, wherever you get your Holton Wise TV. Hang around. If you love what you see after that and you want to talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, hit us up, sales at HoltonWise.com. Give us your number. We'll call you. Who I'm working with today, my man Larry. Larry used to work at HP, big wig over at HP. I presume, being a Silicon Valley type dude, you've made a lot of money. Uh, well, I know you made a lot of money because you told me how much money you have. You have a lot of money. Uh, but you're only going to use a small chunk of that towards real estate, right? 100 to 75 k That's what you want to put forth in real estate. And we did a couple videos for you, and uh, then you shot me uh, a request, right? And that's part of what this show is about, brother. Uh, yes, part of the show is about you shooting me what you want, um, but part of that is also me letting you know when what you want isn't practical or possible, right? Which makes sense. You're out there in California. You are not that familiar with the Cleveland market. I am, of course, the Cleveland market expert, 200 million in investment sales, right? If I... Uh, all of my knowledge that I have on the Cleveland market, if you had it, there'd be no point for you and me to work together, of course, right? I mean, I couldn't invest in California where you live. I don't know that market that well either, right? So uh, that's where we're at. That's what I'm here for. And what you want to do is you're hoping to do uh, a Burr deal on a vacant side-by-side -side duplex. And unfortunately, brother, where we're at in the market today, that's just not, it's really not practical. It's probably not going to happen for you, man. Um, Here's what you got to understand. I do love the side-by-side -side duplex layout. I think they're great, okay? Uh, it provides landlords such as yourself uh, with tenants who typically stay longer and pay more money. The reason they do this is because tenant turnover is usually more infrequent. They're more happy, right? The layouts are nicer. They're bigger. They make less noise. The tenants don't have to interact in a common basement. It's great. But the downside is... There's not that many of them in the Cleveland market, right? Say there's 100 duplexes in the Cleveland market. Well, let's say there's 10,000 duplexes in the Cleveland market. I, I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot more than 10,000. Well, let's we're using the number 10,000, right? Like probably 9,800 of those are going to be your up-downs, right? So they're very infrequent. And also in the Cleveland market, where we're at in 2021, Larry, Multifamily is flying off the freaking shelves, dude. Multifamily is flying off the shelves. Trying to do any type uh, of bird deal right now is very, very hard because investors are just gobbling these up, right? To, so actually to get it for a low enough price to get the numbers to work, uh, very hard to do right now as I talk to you late April 2021, right? So you have that going against you. And then you have the side-by-side -side duplexes going against you. The fact that the inventory on those is so teeny tiny, right? There's not a lot of those to choose from, okay? So bird deals in general on duplexes, very small inventory. Uh, Side-by-sides in general, very small inventory. Then you combine those two, it's almost minuscule. And then, of course, you take into account the side-by-sides typically operate better when somebody does have one of those, even the ones that don't operate as well are never getting to the point where they're that distressed, right? So uh, it, it's really not practical to think you're going to get one of those opportunities in today's market. And other times uh, of the market, like other years past, possibly, yes, where the market was uh, – not where we're at, but the United States of America, the whole country is like this right now. It's, it's a seller's market, right? So a lot of what I do is making sure you guys understand uh, where the market is at as I speak to you right now, right? You could have watched one of my videos where we put a deal like that together, but who knows, man? Maybe I filmed that video two years ago, right? Things are different. The market is always changing, Larry. It's always evolving. It's always moving, right? And that's what I'm here for. That's what the show is for. Real-time 
uh, updates, right? Me and you working together one-on-one, -on -one, mano y mano in real time because all I do all day is eat, breathe, and sleep the Cleveland market. So I am out there looking at what is available and parlaying to you what is practical. As such, I've got a duplex for you. It's not a bird deal. It's not a side-by-side. -side, but this is the type of investment that you can take down in today's market. We're going to take a look at it right after this commercial break. Hey, lenders. Are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. Welcome back. Let's jump right into the property. All right. 18306 East Park Drive, Cleveland 44119. Just hit the market two days ago, priced at 100K. Now, as far as photos of the property, we don't have very much, but it looks to be very much nice traditional duplex in Cleveland. We got two tenants in there. Both of these tenants are paying. Uh, below market rent. They are long-term tenants, legacy tenants, all right? Uh, each of them are currently paying five seventy-five dollars a piece right now, but market rents on this property are much more, okay? Two ones over here should be running at seven fifty. dollars okay? That's $1,500 a month, eighteen dollars for the year. After your fixed and variable expenses, I anticipate you bringing home $7,749. If you pick it up at the list price of $100K, which I absolutely think you're going to need to, that would be a 16% cash on cash return for the long haul. You put down $25K, the bank puts down $75K. All told, it's a pretty simple deal. Uh, we get all kinds of these deals in the Cleveland market, so nothing special in regards to the actual property itself. What I really want to focus on, though, what I really want to talk on is the neighborhood, all right? Now, in uh, your research in the Cleveland market and looking at Holton Wise and what we do here, I am sure you have come across something called the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. It's, a, it's an article, a blog, living blog, whatever you want to call it. I wrote this thing, oh, I don't know, five, six years ago, right? As I talk to you today, it's 2021. I wrote this thing in like 2015, I think, right? I graded all the neighborhoods in the Cleveland area. Uh, on an A to F scale, okay? A being the least risky, F being the most risky. Google that, uh, or you could, you know, just go right here. You go to HoltonWise.com. You go to our tools and resources section, right? We got it right up here. Plus, we got links to property management software, prop stream. That's more data, just all kinds of stuff. But right here is the ultimate guide, right? And I color-coded it, right? Green, that's A, super low risk. Light green, yellow, red. Obviously, it's kind of self-explanatory, right? And I go over everything, meaning income, zip code, tax rate, all that jazz, right? And uh, some of it is pretty simple, self-explanatory. But when we get up into the east side, right, things get a little confusing. Things get a little street by street. And investors always seem to run into issues on the east side now here's the thing cleveland is a very big city right and then we have suburbs all around cleveland one of the suburbs in cleveland is called east cleveland a lot of people when we say like it's cleveland on the east side they mistake that for the suburb of east cleveland the suburb of east cleveland is what i would absolutely consider to be an f-class area Likewise, there are several zip codes, neighborhoods, areas on the east side of Cleveland, in the city of Cleveland itself, that are also F-class. And then we have other suburbs on the east side of Cleveland that are not F-class, like your Garfield Heights, your Euclid, things of that nature. Now, this particular property is up here. On the outskirts of North Collinwood, we're in between North Collinwood and Euclid. North Collinwood is a neighborhood in Cleveland on the east side, okay? Euclid is an east side suburb of Cleveland on the east side, obviously east side suburb, right? I love Euclid. Euclid is a really good area to invest in. Uh, I consider it to be very low risk, and you have a new Amazon Fulfillment Center right over there, so I love it. It does have a point-of-sale system, which I don't love. As we go in closer, this particular area, and this may not be reflected as easily as it could be on the Ultimate Guide, right? This is what I would consider like a C-grade neighborhood, okay? And you could really figure that out by cruising down the street, right? What do you see here? 
You see a house on every single lot, folks. If you're in an F-class neighborhood, when you cruise down these streets, you're going to literally see house and then like five empty lots and another house, things of that nature, right? That's where investors get all screwed up, right? They think maybe it's in a good neighborhood, maybe it's not. It's hard to tell, right? Because the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, right? You know, that's a map I drew to give you a generalized idea, but it would be impossible uh, through that medium, right, through that map to actually go on like a street-by-street -street basis, right? So sometimes some folks are looking at properties in areas pretty close to this one that are in F-grade neighborhoods because things can change pretty quickly, right? So like right here, this is what a good street looks like. Let's pull that map back up, all right? Do, do, do. So that's what a pretty good street looks like. That's a really solid area, right? But then, you know, you can go to other areas in Cleveland and it can get really friggin' ugly, right? Like an east side area in Cleveland over here. This is how, dude. This is pretty rough, right? So let's let's take a look at what a street in the how neighborhood looks like, okay? So you got house, house, and then what do you know? Right? Vacant lot. Then we got another house. And then over here, we got, like, what is that? Like, probably 10 houses that got torn down. You got, I don't even know what that is, but, you know, it's hanging on the, uh, it's hanging on the light, or not the light, rather, the uh, uh, electrical uh, line, right? So this is a horribly distressed neighborhood. And by the way, if, if you're looking at that house, like, what in the hell is going on with that house? Uh, this neighborhood is, like, so horrible. It was, like, in the 90s. They were uh, giving people tax abatements to build, like, nice new houses. You didn't have to pay taxes for, like, 15 years because they were trying to get the neighborhood to turn around. It, it failed. It did not work, right? Obviously, as you can tell, nothing else was done besides that house. And then you have empty lot, this monstrosity, this nasty thing over here, right? So... This is what an F-grade neighborhood looks like. So I know a lot of you, you're reading that ultimate guide. You might be looking and you might think that uh, because of how the guide is colored and stuff, it's possible that your property uh, is in an F-class neighborhood when, in fact, it might not necessarily be the case. Likewise, you might think your property is in a C-grade neighborhood, and that's also not the case, right? That tool is meant to be utilized as the very first step in your due diligence, folks, you always, always, always have to dive even deeper when looking at these properties. And that, of course, is what this show is for. So let me know if you'd like to make an offer. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.